All right, we're recording. So, this is a movie, Raging Bull, uh, starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and a host of other characters or actors that have been characters in other pretty popular movies. Uh, it's directed by Scorsese. Um, I say this: I remember watching this when I was uh, when I was younger. And it didn't leave too much of an impression on me. Uh, now that I watch it as a at the ripe old age I am now, still it's like it is what it is. Um, I have to give credit to their ability to bring to life the chaos of some of his earlier fights, and I also have to give credit to Robert De Niro. I mean, I, I'm not gonna like try and downplay the other actors and actresses that were involved in this film, but you know, I think. Uh, the prize should go to him. You know what I mean? He played that role like neutral. That's the best way I could describe it. But let me try and give an overview of the movie. So it follows um, follows a fighter and, and his uh, journey through life, basically. He'll do a portion of his life. Just trying to uh, navigate marriage and finding a mate and dealing with family and his run-ins and dealings with uh, the mafia, which I feel like they may have sugarcoated that a little bit. It's a few few things that come up uh, in this movie where I'm like, ah, they kind of like glazed over that, but they, they told it, they glazed over it, I feel like. Um, what else was I going to say about this movie? Uh, did I mention this in black and white? That's pretty much the only thing I remember when I watched it when I was younger. And I feel like it's only made in black and white in order to give the audience something else to think about. Because the amount of, the amount of uh, uh, just foul language and you know wife beating and like uh, 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 targeting uh, underage women or not even women underage girls, uh, and that's what I and I want to roll that back into why I say he, uh, Robert De Niro played the role uh, neutral in my opinion because you know at moments when you're supposed to feel sad or moments when you're supposed to feel triumphant like when you won the belt finally you, i guess you would think at that moment the actor the writer the director would have built that character to where you would join in with him and be and be uh joyous in that moment but i didn't feel anything um and then going on later on in the movie uh spoiler alert i mean he gets what he deserves pretty much I didn't feel anything again. Uh, but there's moments when it's odd. It's odd. I find this very odd. There's just moments when, after all the stuff that happened in the movie, which I'll get to it in a second, best way I can, after all those moments that happen in that movie, you get to a couple of a uh, of a uh, uh, of, of a couple of scenes where he's um, rehearsing lines because he winds up uh, like touring nightclubs or whatever you know what i mean uh you get to these moments when he's rehearsing his lines or or rehearsing his act and man if it feels like you're right there in the room with him i guess i guess he didn't play it all the way neutral because in that moment i feel like man he hopefully he can get his stuff together in this instance maybe he didn't play neutral maybe i'm maybe i'm gonna take that one back maybe uh maybe he got me real me in with those with those uh those particular moments maybe he got me uh so it starts off with him being a like a younger boxer but he's right there knocking on the door for the belt um he's trying to get pulled or influenced by uh, by the mafia at this point hey you know you're a contender you take a dive get this little change whatever whatever he's like nah i don't want it i don't want it and of course he's uh a, a young lady catches his eye like a they said she was like 15 at the time catches his eye and i'm like i remember sitting there watching like so what are we doing here what, what's going on and then he go on some weird and creepy date i'm like what, what's going on here we're, we're just going with this i'm, I'm i know I'm, I'm sitting there watching it by myself but i'm still thinking like what's going on here what are we doing and um so they wind up uh yeah so he winds up getting a girl but that but that young lady's i, I don't know if she was being uh like tossed around with some of these like an underboss in the mob or something like that of course that creates uh resentment from uh the main character but also he has like not even a short temper there's like no fuse to it whatsoever like 
he's smart enough to see what's going on and he just reacts to it and just starts beating people to a bloody pulp. He's basically they portrayed him as a really, really hard fighter and um his fighting style is interesting. He'll sit there and take a lot of abuse. Now people would, would think, why in the why 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 in the hell would you sit there and take all that abuse? Well, uh there's a method to the madness. If you sit there and if you if you got a really strong chin, you can take a lot of abuse. One way to tire out your opponent is to let him just beat you. And then once he gets tired, you can do basic one two and knock him out. But that's not the smartest way to fight. The smart way to fight would to be to get that guy to or that other person in your fight to still exhaust himself but not get hit in the process. And then you can do basic uh basic moves in order to um, knock your opponent down or win the fight. That's at least what I've uh thought or come across or whatever. Um you know, what else am I leaving out? I think I'm leaving out a lot. It's a classic and I'm leaving out so much I feel like. But it deserves a watch, I think. You know, just to just to say you saw it, I feel like. I mean, I know that's not a, a big like sell to watch the movie, but I don't think it's as bad as many things as I watched. It's like borderline, but you know what gets me? It's um, it's watching this guy's explosive lifestyle. You know what I mean? He's not flashy or 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 anything like that. I mean, it's just him going off the handle keeps me coming back i don't know what that is i don't know what that is about uh why i'm so attracted to uh, uh watching stuff like that i mean it's just one thing after another i mean he beats his brother up at one point he knocks his wife out cold uh and when he gets in the ring i mean either he's getting beat or he's beating the other guy like bad uh so it's got that going for it <laughs> a lot of violence um that's why I think it's so important. Well, not important. That's why I think it's a. Uh, it was an interesting choice to show it in black and white, even though it came out in 1980. Because I was like, when the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this must be like from 19 Dickety or something. And it's like, no, it's 1980. After 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 I looked it up now, I'm like 1980. Jesus. But I still feel like it's important that the movie was shown in black and white because you know it distracts the audience from like the amount of verbal and physical abuse that's going on i mean i feel like if they would have showed anything earlier in his life then it would have made you really feel sorry for the guy i mean yeah he almost he reeled me in in a few scenes you know what i mean at, at the end when he's um rehearsing his uh like his actor is his, his, yeah his actor's lines for his, his his show when he's rehearsing those for some reason there's like an inkling of vulnerability that comes out. You know what I mean? His second wife pretty much left him. I mean, why she stayed so long, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just don't know. Uh, it's weird because I don't know why relationships that like that even happen. You know what I mean? I'm Now I'm getting like into my personal life. That stuff's just, it's just wild. I don't understand that. But um, what else happened in this movie? Oh, it's interesting. Uh, I think I did a review on this, but it's a movie with Marlon Brando um, on the waterfront. He recites uh, some of that guy's lines in there because he went through a, a similar situation. I mean, in order in order for the for the mafia to profit immediately, uh, they decide to like kind of like tarnish the guy's career uh, by making him take a dive. And but in this one he he turn he turns it around and actually gets the title shot after after he takes the dive. He gets a little money in his pocket and then gets the title. Which I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's one that's one thing I feel like that's one thing I feel like took some of the sting away from all the other stuff he was doing, you know what I mean? If that makes any sense. I don't know. Um Where am I going with this? Let me see if I can finish this out strong. So so yeah, I think he winds up having like five kids or something by two different girls because he left his first wife for the for the for the young girl, and he get he winds up going to jail for messing around with another young chick, not even a chick, messing around with another like ninth grader or something like that, and it's like, dude, I'm seriously like, 
I don't get it. I don't get how some of this stuff even made it on the screen. But should this story should this story be allowed to be told? Yeah, absolutely. It's without this movie, so many great things wouldn't have come without it. I mean if anything, you gotta give a uh you gotta hold uh Robert De Niro to a higher standard. At least I do after watching this after watching this film. I mean just fantastic work as as uh as bringing this actor to uh, bringing this character this actor from fantastic work from this actor bringing this character to life. Finally I got it out. So if you like me stumbling and bumbling over uh movies and you I forgot uh, several TV shows up. I've got Breaking Bad. I've got The Mandalorian, which I don't like. Um, I'm doing The Wire. I'm doing Futurama. I've got plenty of episodes up. So go watch some of those videos and uh, subscribe. Turn this on.